feel like I'm losing my mind Is everybody in the world blind? Please, Lord, give me a sign, a sign Welcome back to FAQ The Madness. We respectfully exercise our First Amendment right to publish interactions with government officials through the unbiased view of a camera. Let's jump into another ref. Recording. What's up, everybody? This is your boy, Craig. I am Fact the Madness, and I have a video, which I believe is quite interesting on many levels. Uh, I want you to take notice of the shirt that I'm wearing. It does have Malcolm X. Glad you can join me. We hope that you, if you like this type of content, we hope that you like and share and consider subscribing. But this body-worn uh, camera footage is interesting in a number of ways. There's a tragedy at the end of it all. Um, it's already been released by the Okaloosa County Sheriff's Department, so it has been appropriately edited. It's just a tragedy in the making, and and as it happened, um, it caught my attention, and I already have some interest with regards to um, body-worn camera footage, and the state of North Carolina is not considered public records, so um, the fact that you have a county that even desires to put information out there for us to be able to see and weed through, um, I think is, is, uh, it should be applauded. But on the other hand, whatever circumstances that cause it to be the way as it played out, I think needs to be changed. So without further ado, I'm going to show the entire clip and then there is another side of the story, which happens to be the family side of the story, and I'm going to show it as well, and then we'll give some commentary on it all. Um, we'll see you on the back side. What's going on? One. I, I'm not sure. Uh, I just was told to let her know if you guys come by. Okay. Uh, so I'm going to give her a quick call and let you guys know. Okay. Let her know that so there was a fight going on or something? Uh, that's. I was not present for that. Okay. But, Are they fighting or something? She's saying that it happens frequently. Okay. But this time it sounded like it was getting out of hand. Okay, which door? Um, oh. well, I'm not sure. Two weeks ago, I was walking by, like, by their apartment, basically, mm -hmm. on this side, and I was hearing someone yell, like, shut the up, like, you stupid B word, and all this other mm -hmm. stuff, and I heard a slap. Like okay. right after it, but I wasn't sure where it came from. Okay. And I couldn't call, like, I didn't want to call the police. And, like, you know. Which room is it? 1401. 1401, okay. 1401. But the girl sounded scared, the one that called. She said, she was like, it's getting out of, it sounds like it's getting really okay. out of hand. So it's hit number four, huh? Yeah. Okay. You mean fair? We stand out there and direct the deputy that's coming to this okay. area? It's not, you, you're going to go up to the fourth floor uh -huh. and it's going to be on this side. Right? Gotcha.
Sheriff's office, open the door! Sheriff's office, open the door! Step out. Drop the gun! Drop the gun! Drop the gun! 312, shots fired. Suspect down. Do not move! 312, get EMS my location. Now that... <laughs> I mean, there's always two sides to a coin. Um, and I pause it here because from what I can see, it doesn't look like this gentleman, other than having a gun, poses a threat to the officer. I mean, I have so many questions with regards to everything that has occurred to this point. That is ridiculous. Now, I don't know if I should pose my questions now with just this video. But just for for clarity's sake and and, and for context, the reason why this video exists is because it's in response to the the news conference, yes. It's in response to the news conference that was released by the family and Ben Crump, who is a, a lawyer that many people maybe love to hate, but he's a person who takes cases like this and um, brings them to the public. Now, I haven't really found out what the backstory of this is with regards to whether the news media picked up it up or not. Um, but it, it's come on my radar. Again, the reason why I'm talking about it is because I have a distinct interest in uh, body-worn camera footage because I had an experience with my mother where I obtained body cam-worn footage. Sorry, body-worn camera footage. And it was easy-peasy. Then when I come to North Carolina, fast forward to me understanding the laws or beginning to understand the laws and it's not the same process and it's not as easy to get it by the you know, on any on any stretch of the imagination so so the the Okaloosa County Sheriff's Department releases this footage under the guise of transparency and basically tries to portray the circumstances as maybe justified and of course, we can expect that it's going to be investigated and God knows what's going to come of it. But we have a gentleman who is, who's been asked to come to his door and granted there, I'm going to break down what my thoughts are with regards to this very shortly. Um, I would like for you all to see uh, the remainder of the video. I mean, this is the video that the, that the sheriff's department has, has uh, put out there. But I also would like for, for for a complete perspective to put out some portions of what the what Ben Crump and family and the family of this victim has put out. So I think we'll go to that portion right now. So let's get that going. And I've already kind of weeded out that that this portion right here is about 20 minutes leads up to him coming to the camera, you know, to the podium. And there's about an hour, there's an hour and 12 minutes total. So I'm going to find little snippets of what they say, uh, put it all together so you can see, you know, kind of get the gist of what uh, the family says, what Ben Krampus says, and then we're going to ask the questions and maybe some of the answers that I have at the end of the day, so... Good morning. Good morning. 
it's a, with a very heavy heart that we gather in Fort Walton, Florida today. I am attorney Ben Crump, along with attorney Natalie Jackson from the Ben Crump Law Firm, and with our co-counsel who we are honored to work with on this very important case, attorney Brian Bart, who is with Levin Papantonia Law Firm, who's a law firm that is headquartered in this region, but is one of the best law firms in America, and we're very honored that he and his firm would take up this cause for justice with us on behalf of Roger Fortson. Uh, we are here at this press conference be mainly because we had to correct this narrative, this narrative that had been put out there. I mean, Roger Fortson was the best America had to offer. He was a patriot. He was a U.S. airman, special ops. I mean, he was fighting for our way of life. He was fighting for everybody. He was fighting for everybody. He graduated from high school in Atlanta, Georgia. He enlisted. He had dreams of being a pilot. He had always wanted to serve in the United States Air Force. And he was living his dream. And by doing so, he was going to make it better for his mother and his siblings and his family so they could have a better chance at the American dream. And when the Okaloosa County Sheriff's deputies came to his apartment, his apartment, his sanctuary, his castle, where he had every right to be, and they forcefully entered his apartment his girlfriend was on FaceTime with him. So she heard everything. And she talked about how she heard a bang at the door, an aggressive bang. And she talked about how he said, who is it? And he heard no response. She talked about how he went to the door to look through the peephole, but it was as if somebody was covering up the peephole so he couldn't see out of it. And he kept saying, who is it? And how he went and retrieved his legally registered gun as a gun owner to protect his house. And how he was walking back and the door was open and then how she said that she just heard shots. And then how he was on the ground. And they said, and he, instead of calling it MS, they just said, oh yeah, he shot up. He shot up. My baby was shot up. He, he was shot six times. You obviously you can see how devastated the family is. <laughs> Utterly devastated. And, and so uh, after that he was laying on the ground saying I can't breathe and they they um, seemed to go through the apartment saying county sheriff reveal yourself identify yourself um, while he laid on the ground still struggling to breathe. 
obviously we know what happened. And it's important to say before Attorney Barr address you all that this truly is about the Constitution. Because in the state of Florida, I mean, we encourage gun ownership. We have a right to the Second Amendment. We wear it proudly here in the state of Florida. And when you think about the people who we want to have guns in America, he is Exhibit A. I mean, he was trained to use a firearm. He's a military trained officer. He's very responsible. He respects authority. He's very diplomatic. He was handpicked. He was, of his IQ. he was handpicked because of his IQ. It came easy. All of his exams was 100%. He was special ops. He was picked. He was special missions aviation. I mean. He was handpicked. His colonels, all of them have contacted me, told me such a special young man he was. Even when I got sick and he wanted to come home, they told him no, no because he was so smart, he was so intelligent. Even the kids' parents reaching out to me, showing me love, because when he went to their house, he was so respectable. Yes, ma'am, no, ma'am. He, oh, God, they don't know what they took from me. That's Jesus, right. they don't know what they took. Right. And, and he, uh, Mm -hmm. He had a right to the Second Amendment. And he also had the right to the Fourth Amendment to be free of unlawful searches and seizures, especially in his home. I mean, they teach us in law school about the sanctity of the home in the United States of America and how that is your safe haven. That is your castle. You are free in your home from people using excessive forces and searches and seizures of your home. And Roger had that right. He had that right to the Second Amendment. He had that right to the Fourth Amendment. He was protecting us so we could have that right. He was protecting us so we could have all those constitutional rights. You're absolutely right, Mika. I mean, he, he was a patriot for all of us. And so they busted in the wrong apartment because we know there were no disturbances. They shot a good guy. They killed a good guy. They took from this Air Force, a good guy. They took from his community back in Atlanta, Georgia, a good guy. They took from his mama, a good guy. They took my gift. They took from his little sister Harmony and his little brother Andre, a good guy. They took from his father Roger, a good guy. They, they, took a patriot from us and then to put out this narrative that well our officer killed uh, a citizen at this apartment complex in self defense no, I mean senior, how disingenuous senior airman, senior airman Roger Fortson he was senior airman senior airman Roger, that's who they killed. And, and to put out this narrative, I mean, it was so disingenuous when you think about it. You put out this narrative demonizing his name as if he did something wrong. As he co committed some crime, trying to justify an unjustifiable killing. 
Now, when you make a mistake, when you make a mistake, you own up to it. You don't try to justify killing a good guy. Okaloosa Sheriff's Department need to own up to this. They need to give him the dignity and the respect that he deserves. He's so richly deserved. Yeah. He he there's photographs that we're gonna share with you. He was so proud to be in the Air Force. He had a photograph of him in his uniform, his airman's uniform, and he bought his little sister Harmony the airman's uniform that she put on. And they have a photograph of them standing side by side and she's saluting her big brother. I mean, if a picture is worth a thousand words, that picture is worth a million. How much he loved being in the United States Air Force and serving his country. At this time, you're going to hear from a, a great lawyer. Uh, we've worked together on mass torts and different cases. Uh, their law firm is an incredible law firm, and we're very honored to work with Lev and Papantonia on this case. Attorney Brian Barr. There you go. Okay. 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 Thank you, Brian. Ben, I, I thank you. Um, for inviting me in to work on this case. Um, God, I wish I wasn't here. Um, I just got to meet them this morning. Um, what an incredible family. And I've been listening to stories about Roger, this kid who was this quiet kid growing up, through his time in the Air Force, gaining confidence, learning who he was, so much ahead of him. And all he was doing was sitting in his house, sitting in his house. My Lord. Every one of us sit in our houses every day. And every one of us, if somebody we don't know comes into our house, are going to defend ourselves, every single one of us. And he lost his life because they knocked on the wrong door. And they came into the wrong door. Mistakes happen. We know that. Humans aren't perfect. Good people make mistakes. But good people also own their mistakes. Mm. They don't put out statements. The day this happened, you read that statement. Go pick it up and read it. What's it make you think? Mm -hmm. It makes you think this happened outside. That this kid was in the middle of a disturbance. Mm -hmm. And he did something. He instigated this and lost his life. That's what it makes it sound like. It sounded like justified. That's hmm. what they tried to make it sound like. So justified that none of y'all even covered it. <laughs> That's deep. That's deep. There's a few people that, that had the story. But it didn't get any attention. You know when I heard about it? Yesterday. I live here. I didn't hear about it till I got a call from Ben. That's what that statement did. It made people try to forget Roger. Made it look like he was at fault. Well, we're telling the Sheriff's Department you got to own this. Mm -hmm. We want transparency. That's all we want. Mm -hmm. We want to see the body cam video. Mm -hmm. 
We want to know what happened. We want the mistakes to be owned. Mm -hmm. That's our job. And we're not going away until that transparency happens. And we're not going to let them forget Roger. Amen. That's not going to happen, not on our watch. Amen. Not to this kid. Yeah. Not to this family. Amen. With that, there's not much more I can say. I'm going to let Mika. Yeah. I, I will say this, uh, Attorney LaRuby May, who works with Brian, reminded me that Okaloosa County was where, uh, I guess a year ago, an acorn fell on top of a police car, a sheriff's deputy, November, mm -hmm. and that it's on video the officer unloaded his gun. And, and then got on the ground like he was shot. And Attorney May said, Attorney Crump, this is the same sheriff's department. And it seemed like they tried to justify that initially too. Well, that can't be the policy of trying to justify unjustifiable excessive use of force. Okaloosa County Sheriff Department is the same department that is that had their officer mistake an acorn falling on the roof of, of one of their cars, one of their units for being gunfire and shooting. I don't know. We could count multiple shots and then fast forward to. So that happened like in November and this incident happened maybe seven or eight days ago, a week ago. And then tried to claim self-defense. I mean, it makes no sense. I mean, it doesn't add up. You, you come into my apartment, you shoot and kill me, and then you say it was self-defense. How does that make any sense? And so it is about the truth. It's about transparency, yeah. and it's about justice. Yeah. It's about justice for senior airmen, senior airmen, Roger Fortson. It's an interesting statement, um, and I'm going to explore it a little bit more. But uh, the Second Amendment applies to Roger, too. I know what he means. I don't know if you know what he means, but he's talking about it applies to a black person, too. It's what Malcolm X was talking about when he stated when the by any means necessary statement came about. And I'm going to say exactly what he said. Uh, let me find. He gave this in on 28 June 1964. We declare our right on this earth to be a human being, to be respected as a human being, to be given the rights of a human being in this society, on this earth, in this day, which we intend to bring into existence by any means necessary. Um, two perspectives. Well, let's call it three perspectives. Any reasonable person is one perspective. The perspective of the sheriff's department and the perspective of the family. Clearly, it seems, at least from my perspective, that there really was no reason for the officer, the sheriff deputy, to uh, fire. I mean, we can clearly see that there is a point in the video where his hand was down. He didn't have it raised up towards the officer. He had already found a position of safety, which was away from the door, and which exact which actually may have exasperated the situation because um, if it sounds as though um, Roger said something about the police, but he's likely looking outside. Um, and he couldn't see any, anything. And we saw from the camera, from the officer's camera, that he hid himself from view. Now, he could say maybe he was shielding himself from direct fire, if that, if that was the case. And it's very likely that he may have 
perceive that there might have been a possibility that the person that he was addressing might be armed. They're in Florida. It's legal, perfectly legal for a person to have a firearm. So I've, I just find it very interesting that the, that the approach that the officer takes was so violent and so immediate. Um, he saw a gun. Sure, that might make yourself aware that there is a gun. But does that necessarily mean that you need to fire upon the individual? If you see other people out in public under various circumstances, does that mean that you need to fire upon that those individuals when you see a gun? I say no. It seems as though there needs to be more training. It seems as though there needs to be a different tactic. Why, for example, was the officer demanding that the person uh, open the door? doesn't necessarily have any right to open the door. He listened. You can hear, you can see that he was listening for a period of time to see if he heard anything. I didn't hear any disturbance that was going on. And even if there was quote unquote a disturbance, it seems as though there might have been, if he might, if he would have taken just a little bit longer, he might've determined that the person was talking to someone on the phone. Didn't hear anybody responding, or maybe he did hear somebody responding, but I think he just needed to take more time to figure out what was going on. This man did not have to die at the hands of this officer. I think he acted prematurely. I think that there's likely going to be more investigation that comes out, and it should be known or should be determined that this was an unjustified murder, allegedly, and that this officer should uh, face, you know, repercussions. There should be consequences for his actions. And, you know, I guess we say sad to say that it's going to be the taxpayers that uh, may have to face or take care of it. Uh, you know, maybe there is like a Tyrant Terminator said, maybe there is a way that we can attack um, the insurance uh policies of these agencies that for whatever reason shoot first and ask questions later i think it's problematic i think this that it's reasonable for this family to see that there's going to be something that they're going to have to do they're going to have to face the media and it seems as though whether he this crump gentleman mr ben crump uh, sought out them or if there was people in the neighborhood who said you need to contact this person he's doing a service to the community by being able to find the information and address issues such as this so I don't see anything um, necessary but for you know the, the truth to come out and that's going to take uh, transparency with the sheriff's department um, it's going to take, uh, you know, maybe a little digging into, you know, and if I was going to, let's see, if you are going to begin to find other information that was available to you, knowing that this is likely going to be under investigation, where would you start? I think it might be interesting to hear what the 911 call was. They, the young lady here, maybe an attorney mentioned that there was a fourth party, uh, that was, um, that did the 911 call. So maybe there's more information that could be learned from there, gleaned from there. All right. Well, um, those are the few points that I wanted to bring out. And this is why it kind of got uh, on my radar. Again, it has to do with body worn camera footage. And, and more importantly, it has to do with the sheriff's department which is where I've decided that I'm going to start here in North Carolina. So there's lots of things that I'm going to be following up on. Uh, thank you for making it to the end of my uh, this video. Appreciate the, the support. Appreciate you checking out my video. Uh, if, if you enjoy this content, then uh, consider subscribing and drop a like and uh, even share. Uh, we appreciate the boost that it gives to the algorithm. And we really would love to put out more content such as this um and you can let us know exactly what it is that you think about it peace thank you for watching if you have a video you'd like for us to cover use the submit link in the description or pinned comment if you enjoyed this one consider subscribing and hit the bell to be notified of future content 
Be sure to check out all of the other content we have for your edutainment. We will continue to respectfully exercise our First Amendment rights and publish the interactions we have with government officials. Remember to like, share, and leave a comment. It's the easiest way for you to let us know your thoughts about our channel. I want to be the greatest. Everybody on the face shit. I look around and feel like everybody is the fakest. I make this every day and I'm impatient. Hoping one day I blow up from the basement. Statement, the top is so vacant. I don't hear shit that I think is amazing. Waiting for my day when I'm playing. Sold out shows for a thousand faces. Hey, give me that crown. Get in my way and you'll be put down. It ain't your place. All this my town. If I want that shit, then I'll get it right now. I'm losing it. The noose it fits. Some loose shit. A stupid myth. You choose to live or choose to dip. You choose to fight or lose your grip and lose a gift. Oh.